What will your future look like? The job you do today could be different than the jobs of tomorrow. Some see this as a challenge. At UCF, we see opportunity. A chance for you to grow your knowledge and strengthen your skills from anywhere life might take you. With in-demand degree programs and resources for your success, UCF Online can help you prepare for the future and all the possibilities that come with it. From the University of Central Florida's Center for Distributed Learning, I'm Kelvin Thompson. And I am Tom Cavanaugh. And you are listening to TopCast, the teaching online podcast. Hey, Tom. Hey, Kelvin. How are you this fine afternoon? I am fine. Like I wonder afternoon. sometimes when we say that, you know, how are you this afternoon or whatever, what time mm -hmm. of the day people are mm -hmm. listening. Because mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I have um, a, a doctor who I call their office and, uh, you know, when I want to try and get in touch with the nurse for my general practitioner, her voicemail says, uh, good morning. Hmm. And, you know, I'm calling at four in the afternoon and it seems it seems odd to me that that's now forever recorded as a good morning. Um, and it just takes me out of the call for a brief moment before I have to leave my message for whatever mm -hmm. refill or appointment I need. Yes, anachronisms. Yeah. Anachronistic yeah. existential podcast meanderings and musings. Yeah, sorry, is this on your morning commute into your your day job, um, or is this on a long run at lunch, or maybe in the evening while you're walking the dog? Who mm -hmm. knows? Who knows what you're doing and when you're doing Drifting it? Drifting off to sleep. People use this podcast uh -huh. <laughs> when they have a hard time <laughs> sleeping. You know, it's a there cure is a podcast for like that. There's a guy who just reads stuff. You know, and I'm like, okay, that that might be handy. That's that's my son used to listen to one. Um, he told me about. He, I think there was one that was just like Morgan Freeman's voice reading stuff. He said I wouldn't that fall asleep to that. I, I'm going to find that interesting. It's just, well, it probably, but, you know, who knows what he's reading, but it's... Uh, Give me the he's phone book. Got, I'm going to probably listen to Morgan Freeman. Probably. He's just got such an awesome, soothing voice. That's right. That's right. But we don't. Maybe you mm. more than me. Mm. I hear myself, well, and I hear the nasally whine, and I just, oh my gosh, is that what I sound like? We don't. I think we should just give our listeners permission to uh, mentally edit the, the time references at any point that they want to. That's right. Every time That's we right. say good afternoon, they should hear good whatever. Fill, fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. That's right. Yes. And, and we're talking about the time we're recording. We recognize yes. that there are different times to, to be listening. A, a podcast I, I listen to sometimes in the intro has uh, this, this recording has been ripped from space and time for <laughs> your convenience. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like too. it. Yeah, that's good. You ask what's in the thermos. <laughs> you can read my mind. <laughs> I, I, yes, I have been uh, <laughs> sipping here as we prepare, and uh, I do want to know what's in the thermos, Kelvin. Yes, that's called that's called an abrupt transition, Tom. That's what's in the thermos. It is. Well, I know there um, is actually a thermos because I saw there, it. There is a. There is a thermos for those video viewers. Uh, it's, it has made a cameo appearance now uh, for you auditorily uh, minded folks. They're, they just trust us. Well, um, I'll say first, this coffee connection is briefly interrupted for breaking news to make a final plug for our single question TopCast listener survey right up here at the top of the episode rather than, than at the end. Uh, that URL to the survey again is bit.ly slash TopCast survey 2021 bit.ly slash topcast survey 2021 whether you've just started listening to the podcast or whether you've been with us for years would you please take just a moment to answer one question one question that's it just one that url again is bit.ly slash topcast survey 2021 we'll leave the survey open for a while so even if we don't plug it anymore, and if even if you're listening to this episode well after its initial release, please go ahead and respond. This is for you also. Bitly slash Topcast Survey 2021. We now return you to your regularly scheduled <laughs> coffee connection. So well today's done. coffee, Tom, is yes. a single origin Ethiopia. Uh, so okay. I picked this up locally in Winter Park, Florida from Kush. 
coffee and bodega. Uh, it's a it's a dimin, diminutive form of a Norwegian word, kuslik. Kuslik. And so kush is that, and so it means coziness. I, strum, I stumbled across this business uh, several months ago, right after it opened, and I was impressed by the focus of the small business. It's a little tiny shop right across from Rollins College. And so I uh, was thinking, oh, I need to get some new beans. I'm going to go to that place. And so I recently went there, and uh, they take their coffee seriously. Whether you're getting a handcrafted cup on the spot or buying whole beans like I did for brewing at home. And they also sell a number of other small indulgence products things like apple butter and luxury soaps and wine and candles. But when you look beneath the surface, the customer experience with their products is just part of the story because the family that owns Kush wants to do good strategically. So they partner with high quality product suppliers and nonprofit organizations so that they can donate a percentage of each purchase to benefit worthwhile causes locally and internationally. So that combination of I don't know, we might say personal touch, excellence, along with strategic business savvy at Kush Coffee seem to me to recommend today's coffee for today's episode topic. How's the coffee? How's the connection? Okay. I like the coffee. I think I may have been in there before. Last time I was in Park Avenue in Winter Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be. So, yeah, thank you. I probably should have thought Mm -hmm. to pick up some coffee for the podcast, but I I didn't. Um, So I enjoy the coffee. Thank you very much. Um, The connection, working on that. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. I know what we're talking about, and I now know what I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, you know, maybe a personal touch, Mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. in there. You kind of hit that mm -hmm. a little Mm -hmm. with a little emphasis. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you said excellence. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's a thread in there to pull on that's, mm-hmm. that will lead me eventually to our, to our topic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. Kind of business strategy, operational excellence, personal experience with quality, I guess right. we could say products, yep. all that, all that seemed to connect to me to today's topic. So, you know, tell people what we're talking about and they can judge for themselves whether there was some kind of a connection. <laughs> yeah. So we, we want to actually spend a little bit of time uh, really underscoring the importance of faculty in online and, and blended learning, as opposed to sort of the, the infrastructure and bureaucracy and administration that we often talk about that are associated with developing online learning and all of that's important but really the center of the bullseye are the faculty who are responsible for ultimately building delivering and then uh, instructing uh, uh, students through through online mechanisms so if i can bring you back in time just a Mm. just a little bit uh, back in episode 37 of this TopCast Doesn't that seem series. like a long time ago now? It does. You know, what are we now at 100? 99. Next episode's 100. We should, Next like, wear Next episode's hats. 100. So, wow. I should bring a cane. You should bring some false teeth. We should bring hats. <laughs> that's Something. right. Yeah, that's amazing. So, episode 99. So, go back to 37. That was our six deadly sins of online teaching. Mm -hmm, And it's actually mm -hmm. one, you tell me, one of our more popular episodes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we noted in that episode that, quote, online faculty are at the heart of successful and unsuccessful online courses. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what about the role of faculty in the whole online initiative at the institutional level and and beyond. So in this episode, Mm -hmm. we wanted to spend that time thinking through the relationship between and among the various strands of our TopCast audience, the online and blended faculty that we know who listen, instructional Mm -hmm. designers and related roles we know who listen, Mm -hmm. and administrative leaders who we know Mm -hmm. uh, listen. And so that is, uh, to what extent is online teaching and learning a faculty-driven activity, and to what extent is it administratively driven? Mm-hmm. One one turn of phrase I like to use is um, mm-hmm. faculty-centric. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, 
spoiler alert, the the answer to that question <laughs> is it depends, right? Yeah. <laughs> it always it, does. It, it, it always it depends. So many things, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it depends. depends. And and it's not a binary. Obviously, those two things are complementary uh, to each other: the administrative side, the system side, and the faculty mm -hmm. side, the personal side. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think maybe faculty centric as opposed to faculty driven might be a better way of thinking about it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we can we can align our administrative systems to support faculty um and, and maybe at the end of the day someone should say shouldn't it be student-centric well of course i mean that's i was just about here. to say that actually yeah. i think that's the reason i i sometimes tilt towards saying that phrase that faculty centric in certain contexts but then i stop myself because i i i think that's for that very reason, I think, you know, we got to always stay focused on our students. But but I think we are certainly, we are faculty, we are oriented toward our faculty. We listen to our faculty. Uh, we'll talk about it, right? There's, you, you can't have a meaningful, I'll, I'll put this out there, uh, in my opinion, you can't have a meaningful online or digital teaching and learning initiative without uh, faculty being at the heart of it. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Um, even, you know, quote unquote master courses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are built by faculty. So mm -hmm. somebody owns that course mm -hmm. and use their disciplinary expertise to help construct mm -hmm. it. And then others need to uh, need to kind of adopt it as their own and facilitate it and teach it themselves. So it, we, we are not proponents of the robo course, the no. self-paced learning necessarily. Um, in and of itself. Now, there's a role for some self-paced and competency-based in certain models, which you kind of got on the edges of innovation. But for the traditional day-to-day -day quotidian online learning, that's faculty-driven uh, enterprise. Yeah. Well, I like what you said about the kind of focusing on talking about faculty, but but thinking a little bit about what the interplay is between what we have previously said are the three stands, three strands of our audience, right? The administrative leaders, the instructional designers, or whatever the appropriate uh, similar title is, and the actual uh, faculty. And um, I think that's good. Um, faculty are clearly um, right there. I mean, you can't have a, a successful course without the faculty who are teaching it, whether they designed it or not, um, following up on your master course, template course, um, standardized course uh, kind of comment. But, you know, pulling on that thread a little bit, right, I think one of the reasons we have this sort of this team collaboration thing is just to zoom out, we've talked about this before, this is no secret, faculty are disciplinary experts, not teaching and learning experts, generally speaking. Um, there are, of course, exceptions. And faculty sometimes can adopt what a, a colleague of ours sometimes calls a craft mindset in developing a particular skill and specialization in course design and teaching. But there turns out that there is an entire field informed by a number of different scholarly domains educational technology, curriculum and instruction, instructional design, learning science, whole bunch of intersecting fields that inform evidence-based practice in online teaching and learning initiatives, right? So psychology, molecular bio neuroscience, I don't know, I'm making up fields now. Everybody has a specialization, but but there is there is sort of a, a cluster of a field around this area too, in which people are expert um, and I'd say that in most of our institutions, it's folks who have titles sort of like instructional designers who are the nexus for all of that, right? They are typically the conduits for synthesizing and sharing effective practices from research and, um, um, you know, scholarly practice literature and associations, sharing that with online teaching faculty. So I think those are some of the the instructional designers and the faculty, and then, you know, administrative leaders have a role to play too. You want to comment on them for a second? <laughs> yeah, I know them. Uh, I am, I am them. Right? I was waiting. I was waiting for that very yeah. line to exit your lips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm too predictable. Um, well, maybe even before we, we go there, just uh, one quick reflection on what you just said, because I, you know, I think it's 100% correct. 
what what I have um, often said at the at the start of our faculty development programs when I've in, introduced them. Um, in fact, I think you did it today. In fact, for our I latest did. cohort. Um, mm-hmm. But in the past, when I've done that, um, I, I try to underscore to faculty, you all are the disciplinary experts. Mm-hmm. You know your subject. You know biology or whatever it is that you're teaching. And, and in many cases, you have many years of teaching experience. You're, you know how to teach. You're good teachers. But all of that experience has been situated in a physical classroom. Mm-hmm. And we, and, and specifically like the instructional designers, spend all day every day thinking about online learning and in some cases mm-hmm. generating new knowledge around online mm-hmm. learning because we've mm-hmm. got people doing research and scholarly mm-hmm. activities and publishing and peer review journals and presenting allow us to help you to mm-hmm. bring your expertise to the fore through our knowledge of how to use best use this medium and uh, at the end of the day though it's your course Mm-hmm. You are the faculty. You mm-hmm. own this course. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I also kind of tongue-in-cheeks often say, ignore our advice at your peril uh, <laughs> <laughs> because we are here to help you and make you look better. But at the end of the day, it's your course, and it's not our job to impose anything except kind of top-level university standards. Mm-hmm. Pedagogical uh, standards are really, really up to you, but we can help you get there. Mm-hmm. So having said all that, I think it does dovetail into the administrative side, mm-hmm. which is it's our role uh, as administrators and as people who administer systems is to is to put the chessboard out <laughs> and make sure that the pieces are there and, and, and everything's resourced so that faculty are set up for success, so that faculty can have a great experience designing and delivering an online course, which would translate to students having a great experience in taking uh, and hopefully succeeding in an online course. Our job is, is very much the support infrastructure. Everything we do is designed to support faculty training, uh, media asset development, um, programming, you know, everything that we, the instructional design team, everything is designed to give faculty options and choices and extra knowledge uh, on a consultative basis on how to make their courses probably even better than they envisioned. That's that's our role. Yeah, I think that's right. And, and I guess the hour in there, like administrative leaders, I, I do think probably subdivides as well, right? Certainly it's you know, it's administrative leaders who have expertise in and oversight responsibility for online blended digital uh, programs, but also senior institutional leadership and academic unit leaders. There's a collaboration among all those folks. And I'd say if, if we were going to summarize any of that, it's to pick up on your chessboard metaphor. It's really, it's a, it's a strategic role. Like how can this effort uh, technology-mediated teaching and learning, how can that be carried out in the most strategic manner that benefits our students and aligns with their institutional mission? Y- you need somebody to pay attention to that, you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, and I want to sign the contract, right, for the best possible platforms sure. and tools so yeah. that our faculty are, have, the, have the best, you know, assets at their disposal so that they can do their best work and not worry about all of that junk. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, you said infrastructure a couple times, though, and I, I wanted to, that, that made me think of something. Um, I think I mentioned this to you recently, that um, some insights that are relevant from a recent dissertation of a TopCast listener and colleague, Dr. Jason Johnston from the University of Kentucky, um, he uses that phrase, infrastructure, as a beautiful uh, qualitative research case study uh, dissertation. And toward the end of it, he's building this model. He's really talking about online program development. Um, you should go look it up. Maybe we'll, we'll put the link in the show notes. But as he's, as he's building this model, you know, built, you know, coming out of the literature and all, he discovered from his research interviews this construct that he referred to as infrastructure. And he doesn't mean um, wires and pipes and ethernet cables and hardware, his use of infrastructure is this, and and I'm kind of making a swoop with my hand because that's kind of how it looks on his his visual for his model. It's it's an undergirding, uh, this infrastructure. He said is primarily two things. It's 
It is um, preparing faculty for success in designing and teaching uh, online courses and programs, and uh, providing instructional design support uh, for them. That that's the fundamental aspect that in interviewing a number of academic program leaders, he uncovered the importance of that. And I talked to him recently, and he used another metaphor, which I didn't see in the dissertation, that I loved. Um, he referred to, Jason did, that, 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 that culture building work, he referred to that as tending the soil. Tending the soil, making a like the supportive uh, culture that might be invisible, it might be behind the scenes, but it enables um, excellence in online course design and teaching and program development. And it might be unseen and unappreciated by the uh, uninitiated. Yeah, well, I think that's a that's a great way to frame it. Um, I, I'm just reflecting back on the past year and a half when when in March of 2020, like so many others, we had to pivot to remote instruction because of the pandemic. Um, one of the things I've said since then is that I think that we were better positioned than a lot of other schools just because of our history. But I also said we had a robust infrastructure for online learning. And I'm not just talking about the pipes and the wires and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. you know LMS platform and things mm -hmm. like that. I'm talking about the people and the staff and the mm -hmm, processes mm -hmm. and how we all work together. I think that's all part of it. And, and it really is designed to support faculty. Mm -hmm. um, in our organization, there's very few places where we, we actually directly touch students. One is in our help desk, mm -hmm. and we do that a little bit in our continuing education unit for mm -hmm. non-credit students mm -hmm. and some others. And, and our UCF online coaching staff talk directly to students. But otherwise, I mean, certainly all the stuff that you are responsible for is all sort of faculty-centric with the exception of that help desk. Um, it's it's a it's a massive enterprise that is designed to enable faculty success. Yeah, for sure. In fact, you know, maybe maybe that's maybe there's some value in in providing some examples. I mean, not just to kind of to the UCF horn, but just to kind of make this more concrete. Um, some examples of maybe what we might call faculty voice and faculty valuing in our UCF context. You know, I like, you know, I like to, to trot this out. You know, the whole thing 25 years ago started from one faculty member trying to save his program. You know, he got some grant funding to try out some distance learning <laughs> technologies and and in like a good researcher he he scoured um, the extent literature of the time albeit however small it might have been and and exemplars and and he said well no nope, don't like that that doesn't look good oh that looks promising put a model together hired uh, a student assistant to help uh, provide support and instructional design and turned out it was so good that it was replicable. And you know, that's the foundation on which we continue to build today. I mean, the, the basics of that, I'm, look, I wanna be very clear. I'm not saying we haven't changed the way we do online teaching and learning in 25 years. I'm saying that the foundation was so good that there were some timeless elements that have, you, you can find the bones of the building still there, right? Definitely, there's a through line from today all the way back to when Dr. Sorg did all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, here we are, you know, it started with him yep. and Barbara Truman, and yep. 25 years later, we got a whole building and 180 people, yep. you know, and and right now as of, as of this minute, mm -hmm. in fall of 2021, 55.4% of our, our credit hours this fall are online or blended. Yeah. Uh, at, a, at a university of 70,000 students. It's remarkable. Um, it, and it, and it, it really is based upon that a foundation of quality and faculty centrism. Yeah, for sure. You, know, you mentioned that I, I, you know, I did the welcome to our flagship faculty preparation program for online blended um, design and teaching that we call, sounds like a graduate course number, IDL 6543. There's been almost, almost, we're getting close, 2,000 faculty who've completed that thing over the last 25 years. That's huge. It is huge. And many of them describe it as, as the best professional development program that they've, that they've been through. 
Yeah, it's awesome. And, and you know, from the beginning, we've had the voice of the faculty in there. We've had, like, instructional designers, specialists in, you know, teaching and learning and, and uh, mediated teaching and learning. But the whole time from the beginning, we've had what uh, Barbara Truman used to call web veteran faculty coming in. And that, that principle remains. We have um, that flagship program is now co-led by an instructional designer and a member of an experienced, seasoned uh, member of the online teaching faculty, uh, just to keep it grounded in the experience of the faculty. So important. Yeah, web vet. Uh, those are they're super popular because they come in, they tell war stories, and this is what worked in my course, and this is what did, and this is what I changed. People love it, uh, and I don't blame them. Uh, it's really, really practical and useful. And we yeah. do some other things. We try to really privilege the voice of the faculty. We have an advisory board, our, mm -hmm. our <laughs> CD Fab <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> course development faculty advisory board um, that was a prior name. I think it's evolved, but I, mm -hmm, I can still mm -hmm. call it the CD Fab. <laughs> you just like saying it. I know, and one of them, one of Dr. Janowski from psychology, she likes being referred to as fab. Yeah, uh, who wouldn't? Who, who wouldn't? wouldn't? And she definitely is fabulous. That's right. Um, so yeah, we we really do try to have uh, faculty um, as as the the privileged primary voice. When we chose our learning management system back in 2012, mm -hmm. and we made that, first of all, we had different groups of faculty actually using the candidate systems, and it was mm -hmm. their voice that told us what system we were going to use. The only thing we said is that we would veto whatever choice the faculty made if it didn't align with information security protocols mm -hmm. or it didn't integrate with our SIS. Otherwise, faculty are picking this thing. Mm -hmm. And when we did our little announcement video, it was the it was the president of the faculty senate who made the announcement. We weren't in it at all. Mm -hmm. You or me or mm -hmm. any of our instructional designers, it was all faculty that spoke mm -hmm. about the process and what they liked about it and the new platform and, and the and the high hopes that they had for it going forward. So we really wanted to you know, put them up on the pedestal because it was their system, their choice. We've done things like um, uh, faculty spotlights. I think in the past you've called them the vanguard faculty mm -hmm. that we tried to highlight the awesome work that mm -hmm. faculty are doing. We do showcases of faculty work. Uh, so, you know, I, I really think that we try to live that, that philosophy as best as we possibly can. Yeah, we have a series that uh, has been on hiatus during the uh, remote instruction era, but hopefully we'll be able to bring back soon that we call the faculty seminars on online teaching. They're a, kind of a hybrid experience where folks can be in a room or um, live online, or we record everything and, and put them out publicly for the world. And a partnership, again, between a member, a seasoned member of the you know, of the teaching faculty and an instructional designer and brief, like 30 minutes, digestible, key insights, but with uh, a lot more go deeper, read more about it, resources about some some element of, of online design and teaching that, that they've particularly mastered. Uh, so popular, so important, right? All kinds of, of um, ways of amplifying uh, the faculty voice, um, including like seed funds for stimulating uh, and, and implementing faculty ideas about um, carrying out better um, designs and, and teaching processes that, that help us get to institutional goals. Um, all, all that stuff. We're just trying to build on and, and support uh, the faculty yeah. voice. Yeah, maybe uh, if we think about it, we'll put the, a link to those uh, seminars in the show mm -hmm. notes because That's they're available. Idea. If you yeah. want to go watch them, we got a couple yeah. of years worth out there, and they're they're really, I think, uh, tight and useful and really practical. Mm -hmm. Maybe the last two comments, and then we'll uh, we'll try to put a bow on it here. Um, the the fact that the the online infrastructure that we have works really closely side by side as almost siblings with our faculty center for teaching and learning um, we partner with them all the time and uh, they they represent in many ways the voice of the faculty and, and i've used their advisory board as well their faculty mm -hmm. advisory board mm -hmm. to run ideas past them and get input mm -hmm. on things mm -hmm. that we're thinking about and that's been super useful mm -hmm. and then lastly it's probably worth noting that our instructional design um, 
uh, instructional designers, I was going to say staff, but in, in the, maybe staff's not the right word because they are technically faculty. Mm -hmm. They are non-tenure earning, non-instructional like a librarian, but they mm -hmm. are faculty and they're, they're covered under our collective bargaining agreement because we sort of have a unionized faculty here in Florida. And they are uh, every bit as much a faculty member as an instructional faculty mm -hmm. and work side by side as peers uh, on a, in a consultative way with the instructional faculty to help them. Um, and, and I think that's been, that's been really useful in ensuring that the, the faculty viewpoint remains in the center of the bullseye. Yeah, well said. Well, you want to try to wrap this up? Yeah, let's try. So uh, I think it's probably fair to say online courses and programs can be used strategically to fulfill institutional missions in serving students, that student centrism we talked mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this work cannot realize its full potential without the voice and wisdom of our teaching faculty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly right. Well put, very good. Can, uh, <laughs> I know I did a plug at the beginning. Can I do a little plug at the end too? Why not? <laughs> it's a different Why plug. Not? Yeah, it's that's a different okay. plug. Yeah. <laughs> so some of our listeners might remember all the way back uh, last year to the 2020 Topcast and Friends holiday special. Hey, if you didn't, you can Google it and you can find it and watch it now. Um, while we don't plan anything quite that extensive this year for 2021, we are planning a recorded live listener engagement opportunity during November of 2021 that will become the year in review, little less little less celebratory, um, first Monday episode for December 2021. So we'll record it live in November. It'll air in December. If you're interested in helping select the date of the recording and therefore being able to possibly join us in real time for interactions during the recording, please complete the poll at the following URL. We'll put this in the show notes too, but grab a pen. That URL is bit.ly bit.ly poll topcast live 21. That's bit.ly slash poll, P-O-L-L, -L, topcast live 21, all lowercase, no spaces. This poll will close on October 11th, 2021, but we will announce the date of the recording via our Topcast Insiders newsletter, on Twitter, in the next episode, skywriting, sky writing, <laughs> wherever. Semi four flags, yes. That's right. Smoke signals. That's right. So that's, we'd love to have you join us. Um, we hope to have a good time. Maybe fewer um, decorations than the Topcast holiday special, but it'll still be festive, I'm sure, somewhat. Okay, well, Tom, it's a pleasure as always. Uh, I do have ground showing at the bottom of my coffee cup. So until next time for Topcast, I'm Kelvin. And I'm Tom. See you.